What's up, everybody, man? This is another episode of DNA T Vision. And this morning, I got a good friend of mine stop by, man, and chop it up with me, man. My boy, Willie Hawkins. What's up, baby? What it do? What it do? Foo, foo. <laughs> What's going on, man? Chilling, chilling, chilling. Good <laughs> to see you, dog. Sipping on this coffee, man. Excuse me, man. So, man, what's going on, man? What, uh, we were talking about earlier, we were talking about sports. So, where you started off at playing sports at? What's your earliest memory? Uh, pretty much at, uh, Regina Hall. That's elementary? Yeah, elementary coming up at Regina Hall. We did a lot of dodgeball. Where you stayed at when you? I was still in the Pay Archie. Like right off of uh, go to the same spot. Yeah, off of Fourth Street, over there off of Carly. So how y'all skip price? We went Regina Hall, Blanchett. Yeah. Oldham, Little Brook, Big Brook. So who you come up playing with? With Byron Solomon and all them. Actually, I came up playing with uh. Roy Brown, mm -hmm. uh, Reggie Bashe, Poncho, Poncho, we was all at Regina Hall together, Shannon Norman, we all started off in the Regina Hall, we played a lot of dodgeball, the, fun the, bad, the bad knitting. So that was at school, that was your school friends? Yeah, outside of school, who you play? Who you, the same people, or it was a little different? Outside of school, uh, Byron Ardmore, Ron Ardmore, Byron Solomon stayed on the next street. Yeah. Then you had uh, Chad Thomas down at the uh, corner over there on Amarillo. Byron had the gold in his backyard, right? We used to go Byron there. had the gold yeah. in his backyard. Yeah. Then you had uh, Reginald and Solid, Anthony Solomon and Solid. They mm -hmm. stayed across the street from Byron Solomon. And uh, yeah. then we had Chris and William on the back street in the uh, big house with the with the uh, two story brick house. They had the good go. So we pretty much grew up in the neighborhood of Baldwin. Salvation Army. Why? Why am I come out to why? So now we so now we had Odom. You went to Odom 6, 7, and 8? 6, 7, and 8. Me. You. Robert. Mm -hmm. Sasha Ray. Yeah. Tuffy. Gallo. JD. JD. <laughs> Padilla. Yeah. D Ray, all of them, yeah. The whole squad, all them boys. We all so came up always, to So football was a sport, but did you always. What was your favorite sport, football or basketball? Your favorite sport? See, people don't know that. That's a different question. Basketball. Basketball, your favorite sport. Favorite. What do you feel you was better at? In your prime, height, weight, in your prime, everything is perfect. Corner. You would be a corner? No, I, now that I look back, it should have just, I should have stayed at corner, yeah. but I would say corner. Okay. Even though I was known for playing wide out. Yeah. I had most of my success from cornerback. Okay. So when you start playing football at Odom, how was that? I didn't know too. We was actually, they didn't let us pick our position, remember? They, they told us to go to corner. So like you're gonna be here, you're gonna be yeah. here. They already had the offense pretty much set. Yeah. The offense going through Robert Dawkins. Damon Evers. Padilla was already gonna have quarterback yeah. sold up. It wasn't really no I don't even know who the receivers were. It wasn't no fighting for a position. You was just like this was just gonna be, so Coach Payne had us at cornerback. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we stayed at. I was at safety, you was at corner. Me and Jim was at safety. You and Tuffy was at cornerback. Me, Tuffy, JD. It was me, you were that corner, me, Jim Dan, and Tuffy. That was the secondary. Steve Jones made Tuffy lose his, lose his position the first game in Marshall. Sweet touchdown. Sweet touchdown. That was my first memories of it. I just know Robert scored all our touchdowns. 
That's all we had. Robert Dawkins. Touchdown, touchdown. Damon Evans scored a lot too, though. And uh, Prentice Raymond. Yeah, Prentice, Prentice was uh, Prentice Robert, Raymond. 69 to, to the left. Sweet. 60, yeah. 61, 69. Punch right. scored all the touchdowns. Yeah, we had to put, uh, they took Tuffy out and put Johnny Bourgeois in. Puncho was our. Yeah, but we had to come back because we had never played nobody like Steve. The first play was a touchdown. Yeah, Steve. Steve was a, a monster. A man child. Pee Wee was a monster at Vincent. You got Pee Wee and Kel when they was monsters with C1. Then you had Sherman McCray and uh, Dexter. And Patan. Patan, you had them at Crockett. Then you had Roy Brown and them at Austin. Man, stop. We missed somebody. I think Big Frank was at Austin too, but we didn't, yeah, we we didn't, didn't like know. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. really I know think it was Vince and Crockett, as far as for running back, like I was saying, man, we've been had CTE. <laughs> it's real, man. We had to tackle a lot of big backs. A lot of people don't realize Kelwin and Pee Wee, the size they are now. That's the size they were in the eighth grade. We haven't even, we didn't even develop our like bodies yet. This, the size Steve, he is, that's the size he is. Poncho, Pee Wee, Kelvin, Patan, Dexter, Dexter, Leland, all of these guys, they already had their muscles. They was fully developed and they were running. Everybody ran the same run play. So we were more tackling and it was a lot of contact. Yes. In the eighth grade. In biscuits. A lot of contacts with <laughs> poor equipment. <laughs> Very poor equipment. Very poor equipment. We had the uh the Roger Starbuck mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. with the bar coming down now with the, of Dexter Heber. With the Rodell chin strap yeah. with no padding in there with the two uh the 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 ear pads that wasn't even thick. It was yeah, yeah. we had we had some uh it poor was equipment. <laughs> Yeah, man. So now we're going to the ninth grade, man. And what, how that was? Well, ninth grade, uh, a lot of people don't know. All the middle schools, it was broken down into sections. So, like, uh, Marshall, Austin, Vincent, they all went to Westbrook with Odom. And then you had uh, Central Crockett. What was it? Central Crockett? You had Crockett, Austin. Austin. Bowie. Bowie. Uh... You had all them going to uh, Little Brook. So, I mean, Little Central. Yeah, Little Central. So, by the time we all made it to Little Brook, we was just all meeting each other. We had all been playing against each other and heard of mm -hmm. each other. Hey, such and such is doing this over there, such and such balling over there. So, now we all in the same locker room. So, that was like different. So, I heard you were saying you were supposed to go to Central. I was supposed to go to Central. So, my mom ended up using my grandmother's address. She stayed over there off of Euclid. So, if y'all don't remember, our eighth grade year, Crockett played Benson for the basketball championship. Mm -hmm. So, I wanted to go see the game. I remember going to, walking to Crockett, Westbrook and Central playing in his pack. Everybody's there, all the gang members, all of everybody in Beaumont, they all at that game. So I remember walking up in there, and as soon as I walked in, the game was kind of going on. I remember Sherman McCray, brother, uh, Biscuit, you know mm -hmm. Biscuit? Yeah. Biscuit walked up to me, he said, Fufu, you got to get out of here. What so the game was that? The game was at Crockett. Yeah. I Vincent, know, Vincent went to Crockett for the Vincent play for the went to Crockett. It was C1 versus yeah. Sherman McCray, pretty yeah, much, right. or whatever. Yeah. I just wanted to watch the game because I knew it was going to be a good game. We had lost to, I think, uh, Crockett and Vincent that year or whatever, but I still mm -hmm. wanted to see it. I walked in there. Biscuit said, Fufu, you got to leave right now. And I'm like, why? He said, Fufu, you got to get out of here right now. they going to jump you. And I didn't understand why but it was from sports or whatever so just the fact that i went played at odom they wanted me and i wasn't welcome there so i didn't want to go to central because i knew if all these cats wanted to jump me here yeah i'm gonna go to westbrook so 
my mama we used my grandmother address and that's how i ended up going to uh, westbrook but i didn't feel i was welcome at central or whatever but that was crazy because i always grew up with all those cats that bothered you know that we played against that that year they probably had already got rare you was going to the brook or something not i don't know I was gonna go that path because I'd already grew up with all them in middle school, not in middle school, but uh, at Regina Hall. So I was already involved with all them, and, but they wanted me up in that gym, so I decided to so, catch out to Westbrook. You passed ninth grade, we had Big Brook. So did you play, you never played sophomore, you got straight straight JV? I went JV, uh, Duna went varsity. Duna, Duna went varsity on basketball, but he also practiced a little bit of varsity, kind of at practice, like with the varsity and football too. So I kind of, we kind of like broke up from there. So what you was playing with? You was sticking straight football then? I was playing both. I was, I was playing uh, wide receiver, playing a little safety. So you went to JV and basketball too? Yeah, JV and basketball. And football. Too. And football. Okay. So what that experience was like when you went to JV? We wasn't winning a lot in basketball. Wasn't a lot of winning. Who was the starter five? Me, D. Ray, I want to say like uh, Leon Phillips, Joe Willa. Yeah, Joe, Joe ran with us too. That's JV. JV and uh, basketball. In basketball, Coach Sam was the. What y'all was doing in football on the JV team? Football, we we was winning in football. Yeah, yeah. Like we we did, we never lost. We never lost none none of our games really that ninth grade yeah, year. Yeah. And uh, our sophomore year, we didn't lose no game. That's what's up. So in high school, what was the uh, relationship like with you and your mom and your dad? Uh, my dad worked at uh, Temple Inland. Mm -hmm. My mom worked at uh, Baptist Hospital uh, in the cafeteria. When Baptist, the old Baptist, that's uh, it's kind of it's, it's tore down now yeah. where the new H E B is. Where it was that old Baptist? My mom worked there, and then uh, she left Baptist, then went to St. Elizabeth to work in like microfilm and where they print the. Uh, the flyers and stuff for the hospital and all the, you know, the, the menus and stuff like that. And my dad worked the crane, the Temple Inland, uh, worked a lot of graveyard. I, I bear, I, he, he worked so much, but I always saw him on it, you know, when he got in at night or whatever. How was your relationship? Uh, best thing ever happened to me got me everything I ever wanted, you know, I always had the cars and uh We always thought it was me. Shh. Uh, what <laughs> talking about like anything I wanted in it, the fresh music, yeah. like uh the blunt punt was in, the kickers, mm -hmm. uh Oh yeah, you were spoiled, yeah, you were uh, spoiled, the, right. The, the uh, hammer rims, whatever those was, yeah. the neon lights, uh any of that, anything I asked for, like my, my dad pretty much made sure I got it. My mama wasn't with it. Stop swallowing See, that. We part. thought it was always the mom. Oh no, nah, she didn't want me to have none of that. Like <laughs> he was, he really take care of me. Always looked out for me. Like uh, still miss him. He he's passed. He's been passed for almost, I want to say like eight years now. Hey, but like what happened with? Uh, just just got up in age, mm -hmm. and uh, ended up uh, by. You know, having like both legs cut off. Yeah. And then like he had a, uh, kind of like, you know, when you put your circulation cut off in your leg, mm -hmm. people don't know like the first thing to go is your, uh, your feet or one of your mm -hmm. limbs or whatever. So he was having poor uh, blood circulation. So that ended up having to be a double amputee and kind of like his left side of his arm yeah. paralyzed. So he fought long. That's what ended up making me move back down from Houston to Beaumont once he got sick. And I've kind of been in Beaumont ever since, but yeah, this my old man. It is always just been you and your sister, huh? Yeah, me and Tanya. <laughs> Shout out to my sister. See? Uh, 
ever since growing up, she always did hair. Everybody know my sister do hair. She uh, she's still doing hair. Where? What's the shop? Uh, right there on uh, Magnolia and the Freeway Brown House of Style. Okay. Like she got, she doing hair. She got her own boutique, mm -hmm. uh, selling uh, online clothes and uh, just a lot of things for women. Uh, different uh, t-shirts and uh, masks and everything. Yeah. So she's just on uh, like some real entrepreneur type stuff right now, doing real good. I'm proud of it. And so how how, how mama doing? What? How's the tea? Uh, Everybody know my mama there. Most of her friends know about like Anki mm -hmm. or whatever, but uh, my mama doing fine. Uh, as she got up, she ended up catching like a MS. That's like a- Multiple what? Uh, multiple cirrhosis. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. like a, a nerve damage type deal. Pretty much where it's like, uh, say your brain giving a signal to a part of your body, the message, never you know makes it you know make it there or whatever yeah. so we've been dealing with that and in the process of her being diagnosed with that she ended up losing her sight but she's still mm -hmm. able to function mm -hmm. and you know move around like a regular person but it's just that we just been dealing with that as a family but outside of that man thanks second half of life man you already know but yeah miss Myrtle hawkins she's still up and running <laughs> still still talking crazy Cussing us out, me and Tanya, so she ain't changed change from that one bit. So, uh, back to the brook. So now you varsity. That's what everybody, that's what we used to always go to Odom and talk about. Friday night lights. Friday night lights. Friday, what was that like? What was your first game? Oh, if you yeah. remember. My first game. Varsity. My first game varsity was my junior year. I was pretty much uh, a rotation player because I had to play behind uh, Howard Antoine, mm -hmm. Red Antoine. Mm -hmm. Then you had Robert Dawkins at the slot. Then you also had Caesar. Mm -hmm. So you already know the bloodline. You got the Caesar bloodline. You got Puncho running uh, 80, he been 60. On since he been, <laughs> yeah, he, all his touchdowns, 60, yeah. 70, 80. So as far as me cracking that lineup my junior year, I was pretty much, uh, they sent in the plays with a, a rotation receiver, so it was either me and Corey. Was Duna already the quarterback? Yeah, Duna the quarterback. Yeah. Uh, Darrell, the, the starting tail. The running back? Yeah, Darrell the uh, tail. You got Steve behind him. You got Big Calvin, Big Frank. You got Big Mooch. Big Calvin. Calvin Collins. Okay, he was still there? You got big you got big Calvin. You got Red Howard. Yeah. You got Byron Gallion. Day Day. You got Day Day at the yeah. other corner. And you got Freddie Thomas mm -hmm. at the safety. And you got Twine at the safety. Mooch and LeBlanc at the linebacker. And you got big you got pretty eyed LeBlanc yeah. at the linebacker with Big Mooch and, and you you know that is. As far as the uh, um, talent on both sides of the ball, I would say that's the most complete, complete team I've been on as far as Westbrook, but it wasn't my senior year. Yeah. But as far as like balance on both sides, like, yeah, that was, so, uh, that was the real deal. Did you get some playoff experience that year? Uh, I, I played that year. Uh, I came in in rotation. I caught my first pass. I want to say against Western Stark my junior year, and I actually fumbled. My first catch was a fumble. Yeah. Like I caught a little 57 yard, uh, 50, mm -hmm. 57 uh, flat or whatever they'll call it. You run a little 15, turn around, do my uh, hit you on a little stick or whatever. And I actually ended up fumbling on my first catch on my, my boss of the season. <laughs> And I didn't play uh, about four games after I was out of the rotation after that because Coach Lewis, yeah. you know, you ain't got time for that. You're turning the ball over. So I actually had to reprove myself to Coach Lewis again just to get back into the rotation yeah. to, you know, even get in the hub. So now we varsity. Your season. Y'all year. Everybody you grew up with. 
Nobody else. Did y'all go undefeated that year? Yeah, we went under. We know we went on uh, ten and zero. One of my goal. Both years, junior year and senior year. So mm -hmm. now we're in the playoffs. In the playoffs. So the goal was to win. I mean, I know the goal was to win state, but was 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 that the topic before the season even started or during the season? We going all the way. Yeah, because I felt we had the we had the players to run the run the table to me, and after coming off of that loss. Our junior year, we yeah. kind of saw everything y'all needed and what just saw the intensity mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, and saw y'all got a taste of it. We got a taste of it, but it was we didn't take it that serious because it was like I I jump not not take it that serious, but after we lost that playoff game got my junior up. year, I wasn't just like yeah you know, sick to my stomach or whatever. I was hurt for the seniors and everything, but mm -hmm. I was waiting for my turn, you know what I'm saying? So I, I couldn't wait to go about senior year. So y'all go y'all senior year, and we'll go down in the playoffs. Who y'all play? We played uh, Aldine Eisenhower. Y'all played them the year before, or was it another Aldine? The year before, we lost to Aldine MacArthur. That's with uh, like the Valerie brothers, Damian Valerie, and all those boys that went out to uh, they went to Alabama. But they, that team was that team was stacked. Then y'all played Aldine Eisenhower. Where y'all played them at? We played Eisenhower in Pasadena. So, uh, just, just the first round, the second round. Just the first round. Okay. We was uh I think around then we was ranked fourth in state, fourth in state. Some around there we was climbing up, but we we was up there. I mean, cause going into the season we was already touted high. Yeah. Just along with Duna coming in mm -hmm. with James Brown coming yeah. into his senior season, then you had Big Frank. Everybody knew Big Frank, mm -hmm. so every day expectations was high to me coming into that season. Like they. They knew who we were. They knew we was coming. So y'all meet all day, and, and, and what happened? What? Looking back on it now, knowing what we know a yeah. little bit more you about football and here, yeah. everything now, like, in my opinion, I think we played in a weak district. Okay. Even though we were winning. 10-0. When the hindsight 2020, that district was Weak, Vada, just period. Baytown, Vada, yeah, all, Lamar, all, all white that. team. Yeah, yeah. You know, like uh, then you got Baytown, Sterling. Baytown, they'll probably have like one or two players that yeah. we got a key on, and then we got to uh, everybody be running the same play every. We got to Thomas Jefferson. All we yeah. got to do is stop P. Gross and Joey Mouton, and then when we get to uh, the Jaguars. All we got to do is key on Red Rubin yeah, and yeah, Kelwin. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it never was like uh, when we got to the Aldine Eisenhower, shit. man, we had to key on everybody. It wasn't no yeah. sick and picking out a certain player like these guys was ready to go. So it wasn't really the talent. It was just the, like you said, the, uh, you playing them big schools, man, like that. They coming on with it. They got all type of plays. And... You pretty much going into that game blind because yeah. going into that week back then, we didn't have no – it wasn't no film. Like yeah. if we didn't actually go to that game and go look at Eisenhower yeah. or somebody off our coaching staff, like really following these guys leading up to that week in hindsight 2020, probably by two or three, our coaches should have been – Yeah, scouting scouting Eisenhower and knowing everything about him. But going into that week, we practiced one time in Pasadena for like two hours after school was over. We rode on a bus trip. Yeah. Then they handled some uh, some turf cleats. We playing grass all year. Then you handle some turf cleats that we uncomfortable in. You know, in football, you like your own shoes. You, you, you got what you wear that you're comfortable yeah. with. Man, you they throw us on these old rubber ponies. Or, they were all white. They yeah. ugly. Like we out there more on our first the two hours at practice trying to get our foot in the field of turf out. Before you know it, we heading back to Beaumont. So we going into that game pretty much 
So what was it? Did you know the score at halftime? Was it close at halftime? Did y'all have a chance to win? When it started off, they ran like a option, a option, uh, mm -hmm. option dive, pretty much the uh, checking at the line, checking the gaps, giving gap audibles, everything, and they ran the ball down our throat. Like we uh, never. Big Frank say uh, depth had a lot to do with it. Cornerbacks playing wide receivers and all people playing all these different type of positions while they still steady switching out people, sending people in. They sending they sending a they sending a platoon on, of linemen. Yeah. They were sending a rotation of receivers, but the receivers wasn't they wasn't throwing the ball. They didn't even complete a pass. But in hindsight, the receivers just running us off, you know, yeah. running the DBs off. They never had no intentions on even passing the ball. A game plan. And they was milking that. They was milking that clock. And we was an offense that was accustomed to we're scoring fifty yeah. some points a game. So we we're, we're so used to having the ball. But that playoff game, every possession every possession counted. Like yeah. when we got the ball, we knew we couldn't screw up. And they were, they knew all our plays. They were on all our option p plays. They were all over Duna. They were all over Steve. Yeah. They loaded the box like nobody ever just really blitzed us for like four quarters. Like nobody had to. Yeah. You, we're going to kill you like because you're going to be playing man to man on Poncho and Caesar. But they literally pinned back like, yeah, we're going to play man to man. Yeah, we're coming after Duna. And man, they, they attacked us. They was, they was the more aggressive team like for the whole four quarters. So now we losing. I mean, you lost. You come back. So. You can go both ways. So, uh, was the season had already basketball already started when y'all? You was a basketball started when y'all in the playoffs, huh? No, uh, basketball was about a week away. Yeah. Uh, about a, about a week away. But if we had kept winning, I would have pretty much had to wait to go into like that uh, my senior year in basketball or whatever. So you started, you started in football. That's over. Where you started in basketball. This your this your favorite sport. What position you played? Played some point, but mainly off ball, the off guard, the way we had it set up. People yeah. know it as the three position now, mm -hmm. but we pretty much ran like a three guard, three guard set with Dining and Omar on the front line with C one at the two and uh Tom Tom Reader running. So the who's the starting five? Well, my it's senior switched. year, yeah. Duna actually was on the basketball team yeah. too. So going into my senior year, Duna had already signed a scholarship with Texas. So our starting lineup was actually Duna, C1, you, and Tom was actually starting. But I started on and off, but we went by a point system. Coach Coleman went by a point system. Whoever they have, whoever had the most points at practice, that's your starting lineup. You don't really care who yeah. you are. So most of the time, that starting lineup was actually Duma, C1, Tom, Donnie, and, and Big Snee. So about five games into the season, I guess uh, Makovic and them uh, talked Duna out of, uh, told Duna he need to focus up more on uh, football going into his freshman year and he had thought that like um it'd be best that he don't play basketball that season so Duna actually left about five games into the season we was about we was undefeated at the time but Duna actually left I was mad at him mm -hmm. like he already know like I feel that Duna was on that team we'd have easily won uh that state our senior year easy in basketball so I told him he quit I don't care with nobody <laughs> so y'all had a uh y'all had a state winning basketball team that year yes we had a state winning basketball team we lost the uh the game the game right before state yeah but that year, 
the team belonged to Big Snee. Like he was our mm-hmm. best player. Yeah. But and he was a what? He was a sophomore. A sophomore coming in, putting in work, nice and smooth work. <laughs> Easy Big, does it. <laughs> Big Snee is a monster. Like uh, smooth and easy. Like people was like, man, you uh, you know, how you want to like score and like yeah, be the man or whatever. It wasn't that kind of team. Like Donnie, Omar, score all the points. All me and C one and Tom and Duna can score too when he was out there. You yeah. know, Duna yeah. fly with it. But once Duna left. All me, C1, and Tom had to do is play, off them. play that D. Yeah. 94 feet, I full think, court press. I think I seen something last night where uh, Donnie Coriel just got promoted to uh, the head athletic director or something. Donnie is one of the loudest <laughs> white boys. <laughs> bandit. bandit. <laughs> man, right. let's back up, man, to uh, Westbrook basketball, man, and Central. Central and Westbrook. <laughs> <laughs> Derek McGriff, Eric Rito, Montaigne's son. I got to go ahead and get this out the way because <laughs> it wouldn't be foul. And I know uh, I got dunked on my... Uh, we was there. I was there. We was there, man. I got dunked on my junior year. Uh, did you really... Get, you got dunked on, but did you really just jump too late or you really got dunked on? Like, you know, it's the same thing, but... It's still one of those plays. Oh, man, it was ugly. Post I still haven't seen it. I just know I was a part of it. It was ugly. And I can... I just heard everything. You know what I'm saying? So that was my... That was my... Were you I was, playing with goggles? I had, I had my goggles on. I had my football goggles on. Because at the time, they didn't have contacts and none of yeah. that. And I wasn't big on, like, uh, touching my eyes mm-hmm. or whatever. But yeah, I had the goggles on at the time. And what like a lot of people don't know from that, I was supposed to start that game. You know, that's the biggest game of the year. Yeah. So all I wanted to be is in that starting lineup so I can come out on that intro yeah. in that starting lineup in the Montaigne Center. And I beat Duna out on points Yeah. at practice. I had a better practice. And the game before, I had a better game against Laporte. I had like four threes. Like, you know, that wasn't yeah, even yeah. my thing. But I was I was hitting that three that game, and I had a good practice. Duna had the name. Coach Coleman, he didn't even tell me I wasn't started. I know off of the point. The points from you, practice. You know you start. I know I'm starting. That's how it's been going. Man, we get to the the intro of the game, and Coach Coleman say, Duna, you're starting, and don't look my way. He know yeah. he out of line. So from that point on, I'm pouting the whole game. I'm yeah. not even connected to the game. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying I wish we lose. Yeah. But I was disconnected from that game, like, nah, man. So we playing Eric Rito, McGriff, all them boys. They beating us as a back and forth hey, game. Boy, McGriff could go, boy. Yeah, we, it's Al J. Foreman, K. Rob, Mike Lewis, but, me. Uh, that boy, Duncan. Kevin Bourgeois for Central was uh, nice and smooth. G, man, all them boys out there, Central got a score that year. They, they really did. I, I'm not going to lie. So I get in the game. Excuse me. I'm pouting. I'm walking around. I'm out there, but I'm like showing Coach Coleman. You pissed off. Man, yeah. Yeah. I'm showing him like I'm my body language. Pouting. And Eric Rito ended up stealing the rock. I'm on this side of the court. Rito then stole the ball on the other end. He catches out on one side. Now the crowd is going crazy. Yeah. I see Rito catch out. He actually got like a, I want to say like a, about an eight yard good little lead. Baseline. No, he's coming up the far side of the court. He's on the other side. I'm on the other side, but we kind of like half, you know, coming up like that. He catches out. 
I hit the gas, I hawk him down because he already has a running start. I'm starting late. So when I turn around and see he got the ball, he catches out, I catch it out, the crowd going crazy. I just see Rito catch back. I'm up there, Dan, and I, I, I'm up there. I know I'm up there. Rito, how tall? Rito, what? Like 6'6". Six, six. I think he's taller than that. He long, though. Yeah. So he catches, he, he catches out, I catches out. I'm up there. I know I'm up there. But his momentum, yeah, six six frame, his arms. I get to the ball. He goes back with it. I go to grab him or like give him some type of. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. I just know my his momentum carried me, and I just hear a boom noise. I fall into the cushion. Fall on the ground. Ugly. I just hear the crowd going crazy. He's cussing me out. He's like leaning over me. Yeah. I hear him say, yeah, bitch, I got you. I got your ass, foo foo. He, 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 he's letting me have it. And I I black out. I get up. K-Rob, he come hug me. I hug him, Danny. I'm crying. I'm ho I'm holding K Rob. The crowd they going crazy. I'm crying. I say K Rob. He got me. K Rob say he got you, foo foo. And I put my towel over my head and I go to the bench and I'm crying the whole game. I'm like snotting and crying the whole game. I'm just sitting there, towel over my head, snotting and crying. That was my first experience to posterize. Oh, good God. Oh, my, oh my God. Yeah, and then yeah. after the game, me and Duna, down on one knee, crying. We down on one knee, crying. Eric Rito and McGriff come over. He cusses us out. Yeah, we got y'all. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. cussing us out. I still got my head down, crying. Duna gets up and steal my grip. All hell break out. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the Montaigne Center. I remember that. These people rip his central fan base rip all the the rails off the, the lower end of the bleachers. This side rips the rails out. And when I say they flood the court and it's all like brawl in there. And I didn't. I, I wasn't a part of it at all because the the, uh, the police was escorting us, grabbing us, escorting us in the locker room or whatever. Mm -hmm. But after that, we couldn't play in the Montaigne again. They started making uh, Westbrook and Central had to play at each other's mm -hmm. uh, gyms the following yeah. year. Like we had to go to uh, Central the following year. But that was actually the last game of Westbrook and Central in the Montaigne Center, thanks to Duna. Punching McGriff in his mouth, which he deserved. Oh the man! Hey, McGriff gonna see this, man. But uh, Westbrook and Central, man, it was it was some uh, yeah, it was some some enemies, some hated days back then, boy. Then later on, what people don't know, we had uh, the Needle and Bulldog Classic. Yeah. So we saw Central again. They couldn't wait to see me. We played Central. We actually we actually lost to Central three times that year. Yeah. Like they just had our number or whatever. So we play them. We play them in the tournament. We at the uh, free throw line. Eric Rito, them. They leaning over. They still harass me by dunking on me in the Montaigne. So we at the free throw line. Like Fufu, you alright? I'm like, yeah, nigga. You know. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. They like you good? Like yeah, man. We just checking on you. You know. We, you know, we got you, you know, we, you, you, how you holding up? The whole game, they just, they just steady picking with me the whole yeah, game. Yeah. So that just fueled me to hate them even more going into my senior season. But yeah, they, they, they got their heads up and it hurting me because they already hated me at Central. Yeah. So when they got that dunk on me, oh, it, I bet it just made their day. So that, that's that's the only that's the only bad memory I have of yeah. that Westbrook Central rivalry. 
Man, that was a good old day, man. That's that's what it is, man. It, uh, so you got a son, man. What's your son's name? Aiden Foster, my little man. What's up with that Aiden, man? What Aiden got going on? Well, he, uh, he's 12 years old now. Uh, when I moved back from uh, Houston to uh, be with my dad and mom and take care of them, and uh, meeting his mom or whatever, and we yeah. ended up uh, having him or whatever. So that's been like the... Uh, best thing that happened to me. It actually been slowed me down because yeah. it kind of didn't ground in me like having him. So uh, he's doing good. He's in He's in the sports. Love that video game. Can't keep them kids off that PS5 and that PS4. Like he fall, a, he fall asleep with the headsets on. So man, you know, damn time, man. Yeah, he's doing all right, man. My little man. It's a beautiful thing, man. I'm glad you stopped by, man, to chop it up with us, man. We're going to have more interviews with you, man. And uh, my boy Willie Fufu, man, appreciate you, baby. That's a bit.